And we are live. Welcome back to On The King's Dime. Tuesday night, uh, it is the the home stretch to finals. We're on our way to the uh, the playoffs. Uh, we've got another couple of wins to talk about. Uh, absolutely flying the last four games, four wins. Uh, we're super high on that, so we've got a dub cast tonight. Uh, yeah, and as always, like, share, and subscribe. We're live on Facebook right now, and we'll also put these up on YouTube, and we also put these up in audio form on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, because we are on the Anchor platform. So if you want to listen to us in replay, then go ahead and do that. Subscribe. And if you're using Apple Podcasts, give us a uh, rating, five stars. would be great because you love us and you love the Kings. Uh, anything else to plug? Thanks. Shout out to everyone still doing three, two, ones. It's good to see people communicate, um, posting on three, two, ones. We will do, I think before the, the finals, if we're getting anywhere close to making these finals, I think we'll do a little bit of a preview, uh, and then kind of mold in the, uh, the, that we're going to do half years, but we kind of missed that. There's a lot going on. It's COVID. I think people are going to understand out there that, you know, we'll kind of things were happening you you, you had a, another kid so that that was pretty crazy as well yeah um but we'll do some sort of recap on what the season is before the playoffs start we're hoping fingers crossed we make those playoffs because this this is going to be a fantastic sort of end to this season if we can somehow get finals basketball whimsical yeah with the uh yeah the absolute hardship and adversity we faced this season there is spoiler alert another injury update to update uh we'll get we'll get to that sort of down the stretch of this this podcast but yeah thanks everyone just for subscribing and for watching really appreciate it let's get into this double game double game week win double win game week against the phoenix good game that game was horrid on so so many levels <laughs> it was it was, was just win, kind though. of like it was a great win and, you know, I'm not taking it to solve, but they literally, I don't know how Kyle Adam fouls out as a guard. I don't know how. Like, <laughs> Did you see the graphic where it was just foul trouble and it was just every, yeah. like, <laughs> every Southeast Melbourne player's house? I was just like, yes. How I'm many times sure have ben, we seen this this mate, season? This is great. I'm pretty sure Ben Black got off the, uh, off the, off the chair for Southeast Melbourne Phoenix there for about yeah. six minutes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I texted you, Polio Physique. What was that? I was like, who is this guy? Who was it? It was uh, Karina or something. Um, cause Gibson, yeah. he looks a little bit like Gibson. Um, just, they but just yeah. pluck him out of obscurity and say, Hey mate, you got to suit up for us tonight. We're a bit short. Those, uh, those car formers, man, they were out there, eh? Um, <laughs> That hairline, yeah, was struggling. It was going the way of uh, Huhu Leafa. But, yeah, um, it was a good win, I think. Were you expecting, like we, we talked about it last week, the double game, uh, the double, uh, after the double wins, we had to do a bit of front-end loading, win games uh, to start with. The, the big ones, obviously, against Southeast Melbourne and Illawarra as they were around us on the table. Um, we've, got a, we've got a game against Melbourne coming up this weekend. It'll be interesting. We'll talk about that at the end of this. Um, but yeah, th those two wins are su super important in what we're doing down the stretch of this season. We we've somehow just played our way into fourth spot. I think we're sitting at the moment. I'm just I've got third, the table we're here. Third. We're third, yeah. So third, Southeast Melbourne are fourth. Um, the issue at the moment is we've got to not lose games, and I feel like this team, you know, has losses in it. You know, like, you know, you're never going into it games does. going, I expect this team to win. You're kind of just always sitting there going, oh, we could lose in any second here. It does. However, I, I put yeah. this to you, we probably have the easiest stretch down the road. We've got Adelaide, Brisbane, and we've got a double against New Zealand. I think we've got two against Melbourne as well. So we, we've really kind of... We've got Perth and Illawarra as well in there as well. But yeah, Perth. Yeah, for, for this, I think at the moment, we can kind of start going five, six games to go, man. We get five or six wins here. Like this is, we're there, man. We're almost there. And I, I'm, you know, I'm not sitting here going, yeah, we're going to make it. Um, but I'm kind of sitting here just going, how, how, how are we here? <laughs> like after ha the amount of adversity, injuries galore, you know, struggling, refereeing. Two words, mate. Two words. Craig Moller. Craig That's Moller. Exactly <laughs> Spoiler alert. What a, what a hit he had against Illawarra. But I think one word, two syllables, ticker. Yeah, man. Yeah, because this team is just playing with some serious heart and camaraderie. A, it's just great to see. I think there's a lot of players playing above their grade. Mate, big shout out to Tommy V, my Tommy boy. Tommy V, your man. Yep. He's playing. 
he's playing like a starting player in this league. And we didn't see that. We didn't think that to begin with. But I think he's earned his place, you know, that if he goes off and plays for the new franchise as a starting small forward, power forward, he's one of the best shooters in the league. He's mm. got one of the sweetest strokes, play a bit of defense, maybe he gets a little bit more respect um, now that he's had a bit more time in the league and next year. I mean, he's, he's earned his stripes. Jordy Hunter. Yeah, a couple, couple, of, of couple of big games, man. Big games. He's starting to have more big games and he's having bad games, which is good to see. Um, Craig Moller is, is found his three ball. Um, but he's playing lights out, man. Some of these fadeaway jumpers, you're like, mm. where does this come from, Craig? You know what I mean? Like the players that we did not expect to blossom towards the end of the season have done and everyone else has kind of picked up the slack as well. Casper's having better games. Um, kick it's better. Newley's getting to the cup. You're just like, this is exactly what this team needed all along. Mm. Uh, and the fact that we've lost so many players along the way, um, I mean, gives these guys so much more of opportunity, but it also means that they're playing more game time. Um, and they, they're probably playing more game time than they would have, and that's giving them, you know, more confidence. And, that, and that's what we need. Mm. Um, we, we, we got the injuries early on. We would have much been much worse off if we got the injuries down the stretch. And, you know, Craig's only played 12 minutes a game and Tommy B's played five minutes a game. So it's kind of worked out okay for us because they've all kind of peaked in form. It's just a question of whether they can hold this peak in form for the final month. Um, yeah, I think the the proof is going to come at the end of the season if we make the finals, and it'll be a heroic effort. It'll be a, a huge, um, a, just a huge achievement, I think, to to celebrate. Like, I, I think I'm thinking about it now and going, if we make the, the finals or the, the playoffs, like, I don't really care if we just get bounced out. Like, I'm just like, to make the, the playoffs with this team and all this adversity, this, this is fantastic. Um, the, the other thing too, like every player seems to step up into a role that, you know, if someone goes down, like they're there to step up into a role and something we we didn't really predict at the start of the season in that, you know, if, if we had a crew of like five or six set players that, you know, that that's our starting five, that's our first guy off the bench. Um, you know, th- this team would function a lot better. In the past couple of seasons, we've had teams like that where you just go, that's our starting five. You know, we've got these two guys that come off the bench that do this and this and this, and then the rotations find themselves. I think Forty's really dug into his bag of tricks this season, bringing guys into situations. Like it hasn't necessarily been a lineup here, you know, a bunch of guys there, because we've, we've definitely had times this season where we're sitting there just going, what is this lineup? Like who, like, why is it Tommy V <laughs> dribble handoff with Craig Muller on the wing? Like what is going on? Um, but these other times where, you know, you're asking these guys to go, right, Craig, I need, I, we need three here. And Craig steps up and he hits a three or, or at the moment he's starting to hit these threes. And like, it's just, it's, it's, gone beyond i think the camaraderie has taken this team beyond these are our lineups these are this is what we do this is how we play to just like you know we, it's coming down to five or six big moments in these games and you know we're, we're coming out on top in these big moments also you know in this southeast melbourne game we had like this run and we've we've kind of underratedly been doing that over the last maybe you know two months where it's just like okay we'll, we'll put on we'll put up 15 here who's going to come with us and the teams that have kind of come with us you know, it becomes a dogfight. And then, you know, we're, we're probably, you know, under 500 on winning those games in that situation. But it's some of these other teams that's just like, okay, we put 15 on you and you're staggered. Like, what do you got from here? And they just like down for the count. And that's where I think this team has been really good at just, it's a great group. It's great camaraderie. And it's just, we need to put you to the sword and we'll put you to the sword if you're going to lay down. And they, they've sniffed that out. I think they've sniffed the weakness in some of these teams, especially Southeast Melbourne, um, just to stay on that um, game. I, I feel like you, you look at them and you're just like, we can beat these guys. Like, and, and it's not an arrogance type of thing and it's not a, um, well, it's not, not adversarial. It's just, I look at that Southeast Melbourne team and I'm like, a bit too soft, man. And not in the soft sense of that soft sense, but I'm like, there's weaknesses there. We can get into that. And Adnam's one, I think Mitch Creek having a 29 point night where you're just like, didn't matter, mate. You, you know what I mean? And he had a good like a good night, but every time he scored buckets, we were just like down the other end, driving to the cup, getting by our guys. It's just like, yeah, you know, you're going to come back up the other end and chase guys. And it kind of took the stuffing out of them. I think as well, South East Melbourne has been in the same position we have. They've had Kiefer Sykes has gone, Brokoff's out, mm. Pinot's out. out. Like, what happened to him? 
broke off. Yeah. I don't know. He's, he's out. He was on the bench. He mm. uh, wasn't suited up, so he must be injured. Uh, Pino, you know, there's no kind of backup. Yanni Wetzel is... Pretzel? Pretty... It's, he's, he's a bit twisty. He's a bit below Geordie's level, so... That's I think they're about the same, but I think Wetzel's got bigger, big man, better big man gifts, but he doesn't have the physicality. Like, Geordie's, like, like dense, man. Like, that's the one thing I've noticed this season is if Geordie puts his body t- into you and the refs don't see it, it's like you kind of go a step, and that's where Geordie gets um, a little bit of room. And he has sort of brought out this array of like little little teardrop floaters over the shoulder, left, right. So it's good to see him developing his game. And you know, their players have stepped up and said, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna you know we're gonna find ten fifteen a night of somewhere else." Um, it's been hit and miss for them. So, I mean, that game was was kind of weird. I mean, I you know I I rate Adnan as an offensive player, but he he doesn't play a lick of defense like at all. Just, <laughs> what, what did you say a couple of weeks ago? It's a sausage on defense. <laughs> yeah, it's just massive, just a complete nut of sausage. Just too busy like and flicking his hair to the left side. It, fe- uh, it feels yeah, it, yeah, it just feels like, harsh, every- man. It feels harsh because I like him. I like his game. It's just like shame you were you know six one and physically gifted. What a shame. That's, that's it as well. I mean, he, he, he can score the ball. He can get to the coop. He's just, but he's just, he needs to put on like 10 kilos and slow down his game a bit. He needs and a bulk up. Get on that Shawnee Bruce diet. Get on the Shawnee B diet. Get on the Casper Ware feed, you know, like get on, get on something, man, because he's, his game is not conducive, I think, to the NBL. The NBL is very scrappy. And, you know, these, these five or 10 guards that come out from America they're all they're all nuggets. They're all eighty five kilo nuggets, and Kyle Adams not an eighty five kilo nugget. He's kind of like a wispy six foot, you know, seventy nine kilos, and that's just not good enough on the defense. You're just going to get bullied all day, every day by you know guys that are classier. So um, we exploit we exploited that over a number of games quite well, and I think Kiefer Sykes, you know, that high high scorer has been out. Broke off's a massive you know miss for them. Although he hasn't been at his best at all times, he's still probably one of the best players in this league. Um, and Kyle so, Adams listed at 86 kilos. There you go. Really? He looks like he doesn't look... How <laughs> yeah. tall is he? What, 183? Uh, yeah, 183, I think he was. This is my height. Yeah. God. Um, it's, but I, I, take, I take exactly what you're saying for him. He needs to bulk up a little bit. And I look, I, I kind of disagree with he suits this game. Like, I think this is the game he can play, this FIBA type game where it's just like, okay, you don't have the physical gifts, um, but you can kind of, you know, you've got a little bit of skill. You can run a little pick and roll. You can shoot. You don't necessarily have, you know, the step back or the, the type push off type move. Um, but at the same time, he can score the ball. I just look at this this Phoenix team and just go, but who's getting the ball back to him? Like, he's doing everything. Um, you know, you got Mitch Creek, who's just a scorer. Tarangi is like a scorer. He didn't, didn't shoot the ball that well. Um, you know, and then Liafa, who had a great night the other night and then goes for five in this game, and you're just like, yeah, that's probably more of a representation of where he's at. Um, I, I think Cam Glidden, too, is kind of a black hole in this in the league, basically. Like, yeah. at Brisbane, he was a little bit of a black hole, and then in this Southeast Melbourne team, you know, he's another one where if they had another guard, Kyle Adnan probably could get the ball back a little bit, and you could kind of um, get the ball back to Cam Glidden in these spots where he could knock down the ball. But I think... We kind of got the wood over this team. I look at this team and I go, you know, physically we're a lot better. They don't have the size inside that some of the other elite uh, teams have with their, with their like elite to the league big men. Um, and then, you know, a cast of kind of the middle of the road NBL level guys. And well, it's kind of what well, I mean. We're not going to see them this year again, I don't think, even if they do make the finals. I imagine Perth or Melbourne will dispatch of them quite easily. I think Perth and Melbourne probably won't be caught by the third, fourth, or fifth, or sixth place. So I think that's nah. pretty much settled. Um, so yeah, this is this is the season over for our our meeting with Southeast Melbourne, um, which is a shame because I'd like more points. But anyway, yeah, we, <laughs> Let's eat, eat, eat them up a little bit more. Um, other things to talk about in this game: uh, a little little Kernich Drew action. He, he actually looked like I was like, ooh, he actually looks long, little little Livingstony. Um, without does, the inside does, game, but I was does, a little bit like, hmm, it could be it, useful. It's almost like he needs he needs a bit of game time. He's mm. just not game ready. Mm. Um, he's got a sweet stroke. Was, his free throw was nice. Yeah, it, it looks <laughs> like that free throw he had was nice. It just yeah, it looks like he's not had any game time, and he's a little bit out of place in certain rotations. And 
it's kind of like you know he's he's, he's playing some deep minutes, but um, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that, he's gonna he's gonna have to play a role. That's just it, mate. Like Lockie Hutchinson, he's gonna have to play a role. Yep. And man, did he defend! Like the only time I thought that dude took a proper charge. Yeah, the little charge burglar. <laughs> The little charge burger, like that was actually a smart defensive play. Mm. He rolled to the right side and planted and mm. the guy knocked him over. I thought, well done. Yeah, That's he's a charge. Quick. He's quick and he's good at getting in front of his defender, uh, getting in front of his attacker as a defender. And uh, essentially, yeah, we're going to have to dig deep into this roster. He's going to get more minutes. Woodhill Woodhill came off the bench in this game, had a couple of, uh, I think he had an and one uh, that he finished a dunk as well. I think it was... It looks a little bit like they got Will Weaver and then, you know, just stretched his head out a little bit. <laughs> he looks kind of like Will Weaver. Um, but, they, you know, if, you, if you're going down into the Woodhill, the Kernish Drews and the Hutchinsons, you're kind of just hoping for something. Um, and then I look look at this, the, you know, the levels of camaraderie and togetherness in this team. Every time they do something good, the, the bench is up. Yes, like, that's great. That's good to see. Uh, looking at Kick It as well, he had a, another decent performance, I think, we're kind of playing him in this hybrid role where it's like, yeah, you're just kind of standing there and you're just a, a body in the paint. Um, and then up high, he, he looks like physically just finished, man. Like, he, he doesn't look like he can get off the ground. He looks like he's, he's, his legs don't quite propel him, which is kind of strange. I think that... But even laterally, even like up and down the floor, yeah. you're just like, oof. But that, that's, yeah, if you kind of play him in that kind of, you know, six o'clock shooting slash you know, just standing in the protected area, a bit of a body. Because he's 6'10", and he's mm-hmm. got long arms, so at least he's like a decent, he's not, you know, 6'9 body. Um, yeah, he's, look, this is probably the last season we'll see him. Um, I'm not saying good riddance because he's come up big in a couple of games and mm-hmm. he's probably not had the game time. And, you know, when you get to that age, he's 38 as well having that much time off basketball between COVID and this season, you're not going to perform as, you know, you're going to have that kind of drop off in performance for every season. You go past 35 where you don't get a proper off season. And, you know, I don't think he would have had much of an off season. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much why, but I mean, Mm. look, you know, he's been a great servant to Australian basketball for many years. He's been a top shooter and 18 and 19 from the line this season. 94%. 94%. Uh, he's, a freak, he's a freak shooter. Like, there's no doubt about it. You know, he's an absolute freak shooter. So he's shooting at, I think he's around the basket games kind of struggles, 43%, and then shooting at 35% from three. So he's been a 50, 40, 90 guy his whole career. So if he somehow manages to get his uh, numbers up into the 50, 40, 90 area, I think that's going to be huge for us this season with him shooting one or two threes and then, you know, a couple of bunnies around the rim. Um, I just want to go back to Hunter. He's 19.7 of 19. 5 of 7 from the free throw line too, knocking down his free throws. 11 rebounds, 2 assists. A nice dime to Casper like really early on in this yeah, game. That, was... that one up high where you see Bogut make a, a play like that. We're just like, ooh, we learned that from Bogut. The old you know, hip check, wait for Casper, you know, split pin over the top. And if he can do that, if he can develop that somehow over the next couple of seasons, man, he's going to be even more dangerous um, because he, he still has the, those moments where you kind of go, oh, Jordy, like Jordy. But at the same time, when he's playing against a big, where everyone kind of gets out of the way, he's just like, okay, like you two are match up quite well. Let, let's have at it, like let's have a have a big man contest here. And against Vetzel, he played quite well. You know, the scoops, the floaters, the little over the hooks over the top. Uh, around the rim, he had nice a nice one where he backed down Liafa and then split through through them and dunked like a sweet like rim pull dunk. Really, you know, pulled on the rim. That was good. Um, I think if he if he can show this kind of promise over the next couple of weeks, man, this this is huge for us. It's it's just when he comes up against a better big like Landau, you know, the Melbourne style big, uh, or or Mooney against Perth. That's when kind of you know he either gets reft off the floor. Or you're just like, oh, right. You can kind of see the level he's at against some of the better bigs in this league. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, although Mooney does get kind of a little bit of help from the refs. But yeah. uh, anyway. Two Salt. blocks in this game as well, which was good. We had salt five on the night. This evening. Hey? Salt not for this evening. Yeah, no salt found. Salt not found. <laughs> Salt.exe didn't run. Um, Shawnee Bruce just quietly struggling to shoot the ball, man. That's hard yeah. to watch at the moment. Really is. 
Um, just looking at his numbers on the season, 34% from the field, 53 of 152. That's a you know, it's struggling. Uh, 27 of 83, so 32.5%. Um, I'm just going to go back to last year and see what his numbers were. Uh, he was shooting the three at 32%. Okay, fair enough. I thought he was shooting a little bit better than that. Um, Kevin Lish was shooting it at 42%. Damn. If only we could have him suit up, man. I know we say it every episode, obligatory. Um, but yeah, um, other things from this Southeast Melbourne game. Moller, 11 points, 5 of 7. Solid top quality night. Shooting that three, man. He didn't get none of one from this game. But I, I'd put in my notes here. Um, we talked about perimeter Moller, like how he had to do better from the perimeter. Set a few screens. Kind of fill in as the, the up high guy. But this has been like post Moller. Like we've seen like these entries, like these one dribble drive, you know, one dribble into the defender, fade away. Um, I think he had an and one where he went through a couple of guys and finished. And we were just like, oh, this is like some big boy stuff. And if he can put together some sort of um, portfolio of inside play uh, down the stretch of this season, man, it's going to be huge as well. Uh, Greg Muller, Brad Newley, 23 minutes, eight points, three of five. A um, couple of nice uh, defensive plays. He had a nice one where he rebounded the ball and just kind of tipped it out um, to a running Casper and then flicked it to him in the corner in transition, which was good. And then Casper's 19.7 of 15, 6 of 12 from inside the three-point line or one of three from three, five assists. Another night where, you know, three's not going, let's go inside. And he went inside. There was a couple of split pin downs that he, he got easily to the hoop. Geordie found him on one, I think. He had an and one on another and... His mid range game, mid mid range game, like off the dribble, has gotten a little bit better. Where you're kind of sitting here now, going, mm, I trust it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm happier, kind of going, yeah, okay, like I don't mind that mid range game. Agree. And it then, yeah, sorry. And the floater, the float game has been coming out quite nicely as well. Mm. Some nice float game. He's he's getting to the hole too, and you know, not necessarily four or five from the line. You know, I think he could probably shoot eight to ten free throws a night with the way the league's getting called. Um, and then finally, Tommy V, actually not second, penultimately, Tommy V. You can just do a little spiel about Tommy. Tommy. Yeah, that's all that needs to be said. Did he have his corner three in this game? I'm pretty he sure he did. He did. <laughs> that little security blanket corner three. Um, three or five, little inside presence as well. Uh, only one board, three turnovers bit of a struggler but i still think the energy man and you to go back to you were sort of saying he could be a starter on another team don't necessarily i'm not I'm not that high on him um but at the same time he could be a six man on another team or or this team really like you know for on the wage he's on there's he could play another season maybe two seasons at in this team if we were to supplement the team with some better players there's no reason why he couldn't be seven to eighth man up off the bench you know even though he des- deserves probably to be on six-man type money and six-man impact. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Probably, you know, if we're getting to a 12 to 14 team league, maybe then he gets a start, but um, this, this might be down. You know, basketball keeps growing the way it does. But um, no, he's definitely proven himself as a uh, permanent fixture in this league. And bench Jarrell to finish with. Bench Jarrell. Yeah, what do you what do you make of Jarrell coming off the bench? 12 minutes, 11 points, 4 of 6 from inside. He still doesn't be, look 100%, man. Nah, that's why he's coming off the yeah. bench. It's, you know, it's, he's still, his knees must be giving him trouble. I think we we understand maybe why now his NBA career finished. And it's not through skill, mm. lack of skill. I think it might be through, uh, you know, body wear and tear, maybe not as robust as some of the other players and and defensively can, um, can get caught out in playing the five. I think traditionally he's a power forward. And can probably guard the three and four, but um, he does get put in many situations where he's got to cut, you know, kind of guard big guys, mm. and uh, does not guard the five. It's it's in those wow. when he kind of gets stuck on the wing, and there's a lot of shots of the ball going through, and him turning around and just being like, "Oh yeah, a dude just went to the hoop and put it in," and you know he's just turning around like not even impacting the play, like not helping off of anyone, um, not being in the right position, and. As much as, you know, this season hasn't gone the way we wanted it to, and I think he has had a positive impact. Like, we're not sitting here going, like, terrible player, rubbish on defense. Not not, not Um, a David Ware type player. (laughs) D. Ware, wow, blast from the past. Um, At the same time, it's so smooth offensively, man. If we can somehow burgle a little hole for him 
where he can get up to that 20 minutes a night um, on offense, get, gets nothing to at the hot, like quietly, you know, seventh week in a row where you're just like, oh, seventh week in a row, you've just got absolutely nothing at the hole. Um, but yeah, if he can, nine rebounds as well, three turnovers, um, but that's kind of going inside as a big man and bumping and getting a block as well. I, I like this off the bench role at the moment for it's him. Not bad. Uh, let's move to the Illawarra game now. A, a huge win in the grand scheme of things. An ugly Very win, nice. did you think? It was an ugly win because yeah. we were so far up and did our typical Sydney thing of, you know, just completely switching off. I think they went on like a 12-0 run. Mm, in the um, third, yeah. But uh, 10, they went on a 10-point run, yeah. Big scoring run, run 10. Um, um, our biggest lead was 14. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was early in that third where they went on that 10-point. Or maybe in the fourth. Um, uh, but yeah, man, we, we held tough, um, and Craig, huge, dagger, huge bucket, huge bucket man. and just like t- low, late shot clock as well. It was just like, it wasn't planned. It was just like mm. creating, creating a shot off the dribble three. He's like, well done, Craig. It was just, a ch- it was not, not, not at the level of a chuck. We're, we're going to talk about chucks cause I've got a little segment on talking about Tyler Harvey's chucks, but, um, <laughs> It was you could hear Ford on the commentary, like on the on the telecast. You could hear him go, "Shoot it, Craig! Shoot it! Shoot it!" Um, but then I was, I was I can't remember who posted the video. I think it might have been um, Sumsky on the Facebook group, and you couldn't hear it. Like you could hear everything going on, like the bounce of the ball, the squeaking of the feet, the crowd. You could not hear anyone yelling, "Shoot it! Shoot it!" So I was like, "Wow, man!" To to notice the shot clock. Um, and you know shoot the ball and make it man i was so proud of him such a massive shot in the grand scheme of things um but this game i think another solid start another game where you know you take everyone away and just go ah oh, geordie against a big man that's you know about the same level like i like froling i think he's a good player um i think if we picked him up in this team he'd have the same sort of impact as geordie like a, a similar type of level he's got a very skilled inside game and it was just great to see both teams, you know, like clear out and let those two go at it. There was a lot of, you know, what did Froling, I think he had 19 or 20, he had 22, but 10 of 21. So Geordie was definitely bothering him. I think Geordie's got the size on him, um, the, the girth on him. But it was just good to see like two big men, you know, just going at it. You know, Geordie went at him, Froling went at Geordie. Guys were getting out of the way and just going, all right, we're not going to help. And I think, you know, the, as crafty as Froling's game is inside, you know, looking at that box score, 10 of 21, you're still kind of a little bit like, ooh, Jordy ate your lunch there a little bit. Um, and he, Jordy had 16 points, 7 of 13. Again, those scoops and hooks and floaters, you were just like, this is like for him at the start of the season where you were just watching him kind of be like, yeah, like this inside game is very scratchy. Um, for him to come back with some of these, some of these elite, I would say elite finishes, levels of finish, I'm yeah, super proud of him and the game he had and the season he's having as well. Uh, what about you? Yeah, no, it was, um, I think in many ways they kind of, you know, allowed Froling to, to operate around the basket a little bit more freely. I think the whole po- um, point was to keep Geordie uh, away from foul trouble because I think that's when we kind of get caught out against these teams is when we get into foul trouble and mm. we've got to kind of change up. So I think, you know, Froling had more of his feel and they kind of led him to his devices, but there was, you know, Geordie, I think, did a good role without over committing on, on silly off um, defensive mistakes. Uh, played really well. Um, I think this was like a, a good team effort. I think Casper did lead the team well this game as well, mm. which was nice to see. Um, you know, they dug out of that stretch. They managed to keep in touch with some big shots and then uh, ultimately got themselves in the position to uh, take it to overtime, um, you know, which was... Yeah. Which was Although they they got it to that position, really, I mean we've had two games against the Hawks this season where, you know, a bunch of chucks went down and you were just like one in the second game it was, you know, a bunch of chucks went down and they they put on you know a nine ten point run and took the game away from us. The first game was when Harvey had that like really late cl- shot clock. It was like a thirty five footer, just chuck the the filthiest Jerick style chuck. And you were just uh, after at the end of this game, I was just going, "There's no way." Like, no, karma dictates that you go. Th- what do you have? Six of twenty-two, three of twelve, uh, three of ten from three. Like, no, like your chucks aren't going to get you out of the fire. And basically, you know, they only eat, like evened up the game at the end of this game on a chuck. 
and then you know some of our bad offense and a little bit of rubbish defense just just to talk about that like some of those bad shots he was taking at the end of that game where you're just like man frolling is rolling yeah bam got that one out there um like why are you just taking these th- awful threes contested threes you know lucky we talked about lucky in that first game like he was fantastic he had those two charges in this game the charge burglar and he was even doing a really good job on him i think he had one bucket over him i think he got a couple of misses but he was just taking awful shots at the end of this game and i'm just going you can't just go taking these i think he took four or five just bad threes in a row and it's just like that's why you lost like, you know, you hit one, yeah. you took five more that were terrible and we beat you in overtime. Like, I think that was the crux of this game. Um, for Froling not to kind of close this game out with offense, I think it was, you know, it fell in our favor. And I was like, yeah, sweet. Like, it's great. We get the win. Um, you know, we move on. But yeah, I was just watching that just going, yeah, like, what are you guys doing? And that's just kind of, I think, of a, a symptom of where they're at at the moment. Yeah. You know, struggling that's, that's to make awesome. the, the top four. With then Jessup was out as well. Yeah, Jessup game. was out. Someone was. Someone else was out. I don't know why I can't think of who that was. Is Dengadel playing? Dengadel. Dengadel. That's that's it. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. I'm sitting there. I got it in my notes uh, here. Look, down. They were down Jessup and someone else. I can't remember who. I just. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Um, but has Simon. he been great this season though? No. No. Really. And I think. I think that's the scheme of Brian Good and I, I, I don't know if he was a you know a pickup that he wanted. Mm. But again, it's kinda of like what he was doing at the Cavs, just kind of standing in the corner waiting. And like mm. Dengadel's not that player. If you want a small forward to get to the hoop and become like a slasher and like run plays for, mm. I don't see that. I see like, oh yeah, there's Tyler Harvey and he's just in Jessup. They're the the two picks out of this year. We're just going to let them kind of run the team and then, you know, give Froling a little bit um, and let Emmett Nark kind of facilitate because mm. Emmett Nark cannot shoot the ball. He cannot shoot the ball, but you, you make a good point that I didn't note is their run basically came from, you know, they took Harvey out and we're just like, it's Harvey, stop, stop taking these awful shots. And they, they just brought Nar in and were just spamming pick and roll with Froling. And yeah. that's basically what just started to destroy us. And then I think Forty made a couple of really good adjustments um, he went to Newley a little bit and also Tommy V stifled that a little bit and had to play Jarrell Martin a little bit more, kind of stifled that. Um, he went back to that single coverage, which was good. But, you know, Nah comes in and, you know, suddenly that team just started to destroy us and really took the game back. I think they took the lead at one point. But, yeah, him shooting the ball, <laughs> it's just like, poor, poor dude. But It's kind yeah. of like, yeah, you, you need to put Nah with, like, a, you know, a solid offensive center and a bunch of shooters because... Yeah, Nara I mean, be mad on that Adelaide team, like with yeah, Humphreys like, and just, DJ. Yeah, but it's just Giddy, Giddy two, Giddy six eight, and Nara six zero. It's kind of like they're the same player. Yeah, it's but Giddy's going player. to the NBA next year, though, isn't he? Surely. It's, he's he's destined for a first round pick, like mm. a lottery pick. They were saying, yeah, they were saying lottery. Um, but I could see, yeah, Nara having good impact with like a, a big like um Humphreys. Um, and I think he he did, ha- yeah, he did have a lot of success sort of running that pick and roll with Ogilvy and um. And Froling, Froling played 41 minutes in this game. Holy moly. Mm. Um, and that's kind of got, got them back in. What do you end up? 12 times? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. For, for it's, he, he's a nice little point guard, like the true point guard's point guard. And we, we can laugh at his shot. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a really adept playmaker. And I think the, like with a coach like the Gorge, you just know that if you're inserting a guy like him... Um, it kind of torched us a little bit. It kind of exposed Hunt, that Hunter Jarrell kind of a little bit like it exposes that like a little bit the mobile mobile sort of pick and roll. Um, Kearney's Drew off the bench hit a three that was good. Twas twas. Um, DK had eight points, just leaving him open on the three point line. There was one where he had a fake to handoff, turned and shot it. I was just like, fall for that every time, don't you? Yeah, it's just no, don't you just got to keep a man on him. On yeah, the perimeter. silly. Uh, what else we got? Casper, where in the injury, man? I think he got injured in overtime. Uh, I think it was just cramps. They were saying in the post match. Cramps, yeah. Oh, it's just fuming. Man, if he went down, that would be that would a- just be brutal. And yeah, the the spoiler alert out of this. Um, I heard on overtime that Brad Newley's out for a couple of weeks with a foot injury. So that's another pretty fu- fucking annoying blow. <laughs> Pardon my French, but. <laughs> It's like, damn it, man. Can we get any kind of break at all? At all. 
Uh, Moller again, twelve points in this game. Geordie sixteen point seven of three, and Shawnee B, we you know one of ten in this game, struggling. But defensively, I think he had thirteen rebounds in this game. Yeah, just what a boss. Um, three assists, three turnovers, four fouls, some dumb fouls too. He loves it. Loves a he does love the stupid foul. Loves a binner of a foul sometimes, man. And just like Shawnee, what are you like doing? Dudes all like you know grabbing their shirts and just like it's and then doing these ones. Yeah. <laughs> and just like yeah just you're an idiot that's why you're doing this like stop it um so uh, two two massive wins um we're, we're going to talk quickly about uh the road sort of over the next couple of weeks three, but we will do three two next. ones right now let me just get my notes up just on chill, chill. Yeah. three two one uh Hopefully. the southeast Me- 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 the southeast melbourne game to start southeast with melbourne. uh i will have a uh that is a good one. I will have a um, a letter. It's a countdown. Give, give me. A, I'll, I'll have a a Casper. Casper. I'll have a C, C for three, please. C. Is this Wheel of Fortune? This is. Give me a C. I'll have a C. Doom, doom. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'll have uh, Geordie for two. Geordie for two. And I'll um. I'll have uh, I'll have Craigie for for one. I like it. I went Hunter for three because I think he was instrumental. Where, of course, was also instrument, instrumental, but you know, you got to pick one. And then Moller, I think. Uh, and then the Illawarra game. I'm gonna go Casper for. Oh no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Ooh, that's a tough one. I went where anyway. I'm gonna go Hunter three. Yep. Moller gets two automatically because he hit the game winner. Yep. And uh, one for Casper. I went Moller for two and then Hunter. It's a, st- a stiff one, but I think, you know, over the two game weeks, Hunter deserves a three. Um, and then Ware deserves a three. I think a little, little vice versa action. But it's such a team yeah. effort, man. Like you said it before, this team is putting together, I think, uh, a very memorable finish to this season and if we can keep playing like this like we did over the last couple of weeks um just looking at the next couple of games i've got them planned out here united 36 is bullets 36 is so if we can scrape past like we we can afford a loss in this united game and just to go okay accepted loss we got four in a row they beat us at home you know now we're expecting you know 36 is bullets 36 is double breakers like that's where you're just like we've got to smash out four wins here um, and we're home basically, and then we can just go whatever Perth United, Hawks, Bullets, whatever. Like I think if we can somehow get another run of you know three or four wins in this next you know six games, this, this is huge, man. You can, you can hear it in me. I'm like salivating, like yes, we're so close to being home. Come on, boys. Um, but yeah, the uh, sun, Sunday night against Melbourne. This is going to be an interesting game week because uh, are we going to tips? Do you want to tips first or? Yeah, let's do tips. Yeah, let's do tips. Sorry. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm coming last anyway, so I think... Yeah, you're... man, that uh, those haymakers you threw last week were like... <laughs> you just copped them and they just got dropped to the canvas struggling. <laughs> One point game week for you. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, I'm coming home like Casper just quietly, so look out out there, tippers. This is another tough week, but man... Um, and then it'll lead nicely into this uh, United talk because the first game is United at home to the Breakers. United, yeah, everyone off that uh, that New Zealand train. They got they got that one win, huge win against the Thirty Sixers, but against the Taipans, just blew it. C- couldn't believe that. One game from a perfect week. Uh, Southeast Melbourne is at home to Brisbane. I'll go Brisbane. Why Brisbane. not? Brisbane. I went Southeast Melbourne. I think Southeast Melbourne are going to bounce back, and they kind of got the wood on Brisbane a little bit. Um. He says, as you know, they probably probably lost a bunch of games to him. Uh, New Zealand at home to Perth. Um, just going to double check. That game is... Oh, no, these are all Sydney games. No, I can't check that. Sorry. I'll go New Zealand. New Zealand. They're going to beat Perth? Yep. Going hard. Um, I think that's, that's at the Silverdome. Uh, Adelaide at home to Brisbane? Adelaide. I went Brisbane. Uh, United at home to the Kings Sunday night. United. 
Yeah, I've gone in Kings. I have a feeling we're going to burger one down there. Uh, New Zealand Breakers at home to the Hawks. The Breakers. I also went New Zealand. I think Jessup's out as well. Uh, 36 is at home to the Types. Oh, 36 is. 36 is. Type ends, no Cam Oliver, just Jerich throwing up bombs. <laughs> they burgled that game off uh, New Zealand last week. Couldn't yeah. believe that. How about those that in Tasmania? How about that basket setup, man? I got better rims down the park. Have you seen those yes. rims? Like, what is with that? And that's a franchise that wants to get into the league next year. I'm just like, you're kidding me, aren't you? Um, United at home to Perth to finalize this round. Perth. Ooh, yeah, I went Perth as well. This is a, that's a tough, tough game to pick. Top of the table clash, which brings us nicely into. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about against Melbourne is the fact that this is a triple game week for them. Um, obviously, they're sitting on nineteen and five. They've sewn up, you know, at a playoff berth. You know, we, you know, you'd think that team wants to finish as the on top spot, home secure a home semi home mm-hmm. final. Um, after we absolutely destroyed them last year, and that was great. <laughs> um, so it's a three game week. You know, we're going to catch them after they play against New Zealand. They are at home. So I'm wondering, you know, we, we might be able to catch them in a, eh, we can lose one here type mode, yeah. which will be huge for us. It will be. But um, we're also maybe not physically in the position to catch them this round. Obviously, with Newly being out, we're going to see more of Curtis Drew this week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, this, I think this might be a week, hey, hey, we've had four wins. Maybe let's just get out the B team and make sure no one gets injured. <laughs> that's that's that that maybe that's the goal of this week is to to you know we're not really we're not fighting Melbourne for a spot. We've beaten the teams that we needed to beat. Maybe this is the week we we take a week off and that would be okay. And then go and, and fight the good fight in in rounds to come. You would be amiss to say hey let's um maybe bring our rest policy into play here. It's a one game week. You know no Brad Newley. According to overtime, Liam Sander Maria on overtime. I still like, you know, let's just throw some haymakers, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, let's, a, let's, it's, let's, it's 3 a.m. in the club. We're absolutely blind. We're just going to fight someone. Just fight, fight them. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's got that vibe yeah. to it. Like, just throw some haymakers, you know? Fuck it. Tommy B versus Chris Goulding, just yeah. throw, throwing up bombs, but that's what it is. <laughs> the, the other thing, too, is um, he's. In some pretty good form. Uh, a little, a little bit of a struggle the other night. Um, uh, who did they play? The Thirty Sixers. He he had a lot of. Um, uh, who was their new guy? Paul. Paul was on him a little bit. Kind of struggled a little bit. Two of six from three. But I, I've noticed he's kind of resorting to playmaking a little bit more. A little bit like last year, where he was just like a little bit too much of Goulding off the dribble and playmaking and. I, I don't know. We don't have the the roster this um, at this present time that we kind of had when we beat them last time, where it was just like, oh, we'll just throw throw guys at him, you know, throw Tommy at him, throw Diddy at him, you know, throw other guys at him. Brad, a little bit of Brad. Um, so we're kind of sitting sitting in a position where, you know, and they they have Hobson back. We're sitting in a position where it's a little bit like ugh, all of our kind of trump cards that beat them in that last game. Are gone now. You know, Ely's back, Hobson, Hobson's back. David Barlow had this awesome, like, one handed hanging dunk where he just, just had some mad hang time on the rim. That was pretty sweet. So, yeah, bad time to catch him, I think, but I, I want to win this game, man, because this is, it will be five in a row for us. Yeah, that would be, uh, be huge. Very good. And another just like, yes, yes. Like, we're, we're on our way to the finals. Um, yeah, so, yeah, anything else on that game? On all now, um, the next few games. No, uh, we'll uh, we'll come back next week and uh, preview maybe down the stretch. Yeah. So this this thirty sixes bullets thirty sixes double breakers man. We can't afford to just go. Ah, oh, we'll sew these games up and just go into those games like oh no, suddenly we've lost two in a row and then stumbling and you know it's a chance for the Hawks and the Southeast Melbourne to kind of you know really get that leg back up on us. Mm. Yeah, I'm but hoping we don't some- do that. Some L's from them too, hopefully. Yeah, so touch wood. Uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching us and for listening along at home. Uh, we are on Facebook Live at the moment. We'll put these up on YouTube as well if you want to watch them and replay. And we'll also put these up in audio form on 
the Anchor platform, which is Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And a reminder, actually, we're, we're going to pod Sunday night because I'm in Melbourne next yes. week. So yes, we'll what a shame. Get to Melbourne the day after they freaking play. Thanks for that. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for well, scheduling we, that, mate. Do, do we even pod then? Because we're not yeah. going to see the game. What are we going to pod about? The game. after We'll just come go live after the game. Oh, yes, okay. Ten minute, yes. ten minute turbo pod. Yeah, turbo yeah. pod. Post game. Like. But yeah, thanks, Larry. Thanks for scheduling that, mate. The the you know the three days I'm in Melbourne, you don't even put a game on. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for that. Um, yeah. So as always, we will see you guys next time on the King's Dome.